Looking for an easy cobbler to fix? Well, folks, I have got you fixed up. I do. That is a homemade blackberry cobbler. I'm going to show you how to do it in a Dutch oven, but you can also do it in the house, and you're going to be the talk of the town and the hit of the backyard. Come on, we picking the berries now. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on what I'm calling, whoo, it's one of them hot days for sure it is. And you know what goes better on a hot day than a swimming pool and some ice cold watermelon? I'm talking some homemade blackberry cobbler. Yep, you're going to want to see this and you're going to want to fix it because when you go to the backyard barbecue, you're going to outvote the meat, whatever's on the grill. This thing is so easy and I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to show you how to do it. And guess what? I'm going to give you some tips on some beginner deals to cook it in a Dutch oven. Because folks, cooking a cobbler is probably one of the easiest things that you can start with in a Dutch oven. So, hey, fresh homemade blackberry cobbler, let's get to it. What was more traditional on a ranch first night in for dessert? <laughs> Shan knows because she made bunches of them when we was cooking on ranches and cowboys loved them too. And that was a cobbler. But on the very first night, Shan is very decorative with pastry dough and stuff like that. And she would put the people's brand on the cobbler. That was always a tradition on ranches that I cooked on. Now, this is the easiest thing in the world to make. I mean, two cups of flour, and guess what? There's a two cup measure right in here, Shen, so we ain't even gonna have to measure no more. Then we're gonna use two cups of sugar. A little shake of cinnamon. Whoa, it says I'm hot, I don't wanna come out of the bottle. <laughs> so about right there, a pinch of salt. Now, how much is that? You know, when people be telling you pinch of salt, pinch of salt, let me see. Do you just, oh, did you hear him holler? Pinched him so hard. I'm talking about, we're going to use a little more in a pinch. We're going to use it like a teaspoon. And I oh. guarantee you that is on the money. Just get you some of this baking powder and some salt. Going to need about, I'd say four teaspoons, which is just that much right there. You got them fancy mix mixers at home that the deal goes round and round. Out here, the bowl what, goes round and round. What speed is that at? That is what you call medium low. Because if you go any more than that, you'll be slinging it out of the bowl. Now, we have already got us a 12 inch deep oven. And I'm going to show you that oven in a minute, but we put us a stick of that Kerrygold butter in there so it could be melting because we need that in there first. You got to have two cups of cow juice to go right in there with it. You just pour it in there, mix it up till it's right, and then add some more. And I'm going to make this a little thicker than what I would probably a regular cobbler dough like this because I want it to set up really well. So I'm probably just going to use maybe a cup and three-fourths of milk instead of two. And we're going to mix this on what we call medium speed. That is the desired right consistency. So it's like a thick pancake batter? Yeah, a little thicker than pancake batter. Well, let's talk about it. Yon too, Shan? Mm-hmm. I yon too. A 12-inch Dutch oven, which is deep, or a 12-inch Dutch oven, which is a shallow, about like this. Now, let's say we was putting this in a shallow, and we went and put the lid up on it. The lid would be sitting about right there. Uh-huh. And the coals on top of this would be closer to the cobbler dough that is going to rise over the top. Because if you're cooking this in the house, you need to preheat that oven to 350 degrees. But I don't want you to preheat this cast iron. Huh. You can pre-warm it to where we can melt that butter. But if you're preheating it, mm, you're going to scorch something before we ever get started. So get it pre-warm. Get that butter in there. And guess what? The batter go in first. So we're just going to let it run right there on top of that butter. I wish the beans Cut. were here to lick the bowl. Cut. There's something floating in here. Uh-oh. <laughs> this here is part of a blackberry. It's called the leaf stem that was there. Be sure you check them fresh ones. And whoo, I have picked me a lot of blackberries, got them thorns on them. You be careful where you some gloves. And I just want you to take about four cups, and I want to scatter them around in there. It's called a fruit cobbler for a reason. That is what, Shen? A healthy, nutritious meal. <laughs> oh my God. This public service announcement was brought to you by the thousands of grasshoppers and mosquitoes that are floating around my ears. 
you can see we got about a cup and a fourth left. When you get that two and three fourths in there, I just want you to mash it just a little. Now as them cook, then we're gonna settle more to the bottom, but I like to give them a little spanking to make sure that they know what's happening <laughs> and they are gonna stay in there. Then we're gonna take the rest of them and just scatter them out amongst it. Guess what's now, Shen? Fire. On the lid. I'll meet y'all over at the trivet because I got some more explaining to do to you. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I put me some coals down there because this is the first time I've cooked in this camp in quite some time. And there's a lot of green vegetation. Always prep your ground the first time before you've ever used it, even if it's dry grass, wet grass, cold grass, frozen grass, or a lot of green grass because you're wasting some of that heat if you don't trying to burn that foliage off there. A trivet is three horseshoes welded together. Oh my gosh, it was a hot coal right there. Yo! So that trivet there is three horseshoes welded together it is, and we happen to sell them on the website with adjustable leg height. Now I'm gonna be cooking on the tall brand today, which is about five inches, but you can see them coals have ashed out a little by trying to burn that there green grass off. So we're gonna move them out of the way. Make sure your trivet is level, uh-huh. Now people have been to cooking school and had apps on their phone to where they could lay it across there and it would level. Me, I just use this right here, yep. level it is uh-huh well you see me put a line of coals around the outside edge of that trivet not nothing underneath right around the outside edge and remember we're using a tall trivet and then we loaded the lid up oh i'd say medium heavy hard wood lump charcoal Ooh wee i'll be liking that stuff because there ain't no crumbs in it it's just real wood outside edge of the trivet which is really the outside edge of the bottom of the dutch oven sort of line up with that the more wind they are and i'm gonna give you a little deal here 10 mile an hour you ain't much got to worry about it 15 to 25 pull them coals out about this much further than the dimension of your dutch oven on the bottom 25 to 35 pull it out a little more 45 to 80 seek shelter from flying <laughs> debris off a dutch oven because it's going to happen but folks remember we have to rotate that, the lid one way, the bottom the other. What's that do? It's gonna even out a hot spot if we got one from one too many coals on one side or the other. Well, we've been on about four or five minutes and I just want to make sure that we're getting some of that bubbling effect. Yeah, you could see that batter trying to sneak up and come over the top. And you want to make sure that you sort of cook this pretty slow really to me because you got to give time for that batter to rise all up there. So if you need to, Rake some of them coals back just a little if you think you're going a little fast, but just rotate about every 10 minutes, lid one way, bottom the other. Well, about 12 or 13 minutes, according to the Waterbury. Let's have a gander in there. Ooh, they is some brown intake and effect on the outside. Now I want you, when it gets to that point, give it a jiggle ain't nothing moving but the middle this here on the outside is what i call set up just right uh-huh so put the lid on it we're going to target some heat and you can do that with a dutch oven oh so easily let's pull some of these back because remember that outside edge is where we want it and i'm telling you right now that handle is hot pardon me while i move over here move this back Here's one good one we putting right back in the middle. Yep. And the same thing goes for the top. We're gonna pull some of them off the top because we ain't needing a whole lot left up there no more. And 90% of the time, what you cook in a Dutch oven will get through in a faster time than it will an oven in the house. So always remember that the outside was setting up. The inside was still got a little wiggle and a jiggle got a jiggle in the wiggle. So what do we do? Put one coal right under the middle. We got our coals packed up right up here on top of this and we ain't gonna be long. But if you think you need to slow this down and there's not a knob, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Take it off the trivet. Just set it over there in the grass. Because it's cast iron, it is holding heat, it is still cooking.
fun deal it is, and we done throwed some bluebell on there. Now you got two options right here. You got the little spoon that's gonna be no good, or you got the spoon that's gonna give you some of that goodness. Now you wanna let this cool off before you do this, but we done put some of that whipped cream in there, and I like that crunch. Ice cream. Ice cream, yes. That is a, mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Grow some blackberries. We finna make some blackberry cobbler. Gonna do it one time. Everything back, cobbler, cobbler, cobbler. Blackberry so fine. You see it is. Mm. Now right there at the last, and I'm gonna tell you if you enter in the house, that's 50 minutes in. Pull that thing out. Get you some brown sugar. Sprinkle there on top. It's gonna help that crust because it'll set up and give it that little crunch that you need. Cook it about 10 more minutes. Get it out of there, set it on a wire rack. If you're cooking it in the house, take that Dutch oven, let it cool. It's gonna congeal just a little bit, make it even better. And if you got busy, and sometimes it happens, it even happened to me, and the bottom is burnt just a little, don't dip off the bottom, that's all I can tell you. Now remember, that batter was in there first, and then you pour the fruit in, and it's gonna rise over the top. The outside edges are gonna get done first, always before the middle does. And it's sort of a cakey ratio to the fruit filling that you have in there. That's a lot of words to say it is. And it will congeal as it sets up when you let it cool, but you wanna make sure that you know that outside edge is gonna be done first before that middle ever is. Well, as always, we sure thank you for stopping by camp on a hot day it was, I'm telling you. Kept that ice cream in there on some dry ice. Mm, things is happening. Everything we use today will be listed right down there in the little link below to where you can find it. And folks, we just appreciate you watching them videos. We never take it for granted. But also, as always, and I am greatly honored to do it every week I am, and that is pay tribute to that flag that is flying above this wagon there. We just thank them servicemen and women and all them veterans that have kept that flag up there. It is a great thing. So remember folks, backyard cobbler time it is. Blackberry is one of the best and you'll be the star of the show. And guess what? God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down that Blackberry cobbler trail. I got a feeling in my heart called sunshine. I really like it in the winter time. I said, hold on. <laughs> yep. I'd say medium heavy because we can see the top. There's a bug in there. Hang on. He gone now. <laughs>